Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today, we have a question from our friend HB, who says, I weigh 200 pounds. Hey, me too. Well, actually, I'm about 205 right now. I've already lost 30 pounds. Okay. And likely to lose more. My goal is to be about uh, 160 pounds. Okay, so he's he's losing weight. I'm a pretty, pretty tall guy. So 200, 205 on me looks looks skinny. A lot of people in the comments are like, oh, you're a skinny guy. And these guys are like half my size. So it's, uh, it's always makes me laugh hearing that. Anyway, do I go for a 658 pound normal punching bag or tie bag? Okay, 658 pounds is not normal for a punching bag. If, if you buy, for example, a fairly standard boxing bag, it's, it's about 100 pounds. Like a hundred pound bag, that's that's generally what you're going to see if you go to like a sporting goods store and buy um, uh, an Everlast hundred pound bag, okay? And uh, yeah, that that's a, that's a good product. I actually have one right over there, leaning up against the wall in my kitchen, which uh, I don't have hanging up anywhere, but uh, a friend of mine gave that to me. I had one of those back in the U.S., like... Um, 12, 13, 14 years ago. It's a good bag. Anyway. So, 658 pounds is not a normal punching bag. That's that's going to be massive. That's going to be huge. That's just unreasonably big. Or it's going to be one of those pole-mounted ones that doesn't move, that's actually mounted into the floor that you sometimes see at Muay Thai gyms. Anyway, do I go for, I'm, I'm just going to say a big, normal punching bag or a tie bag that is befitting to my weight. Where I live, there isn't a market for heavy punching bags for some reason. The internet is your friend, my friend. But there are heavy tie bags available. Also, the cost of importing a normal heavy bag is prohibitive. So, those are my options. I have never done Muay Thai, but... I have the basics of kicks and punches from student MMA groups. I just want to do some conditioning that is not jogging and have a bag that doesn't flop around like a quap man. I, I don't know what a quap man is, but um, I understand what you mean. Okay. You want a sturdy bag. You're 200 pounds. You got 200 pounds of weight behind you, and you don't want to fly all over the place. You want something more stable, right? And you don't want something floppy. You want something that is solidly packed. So... You know, if you got a commercially made bag, pre-stuffed from Everlast or Fairtex, one of those big companies, then it's it's going to be a decent product that's going to work out for you. It's going to be solidly packed. Now, here's an alternative. If shipping in your area, I don't know where you live, what country, province, state, whatever you live in, uh, shipping a heavy bag, which is heavy, we're talking about something that is generally at least 100 pounds, that's expensive and difficult and time-consuming and and it's gonna take a lot of resources. So you may want to look into getting an unstuffed bag. I used to make my own heavy bags. When I opened up my first gym in the United States, I made my own heavy bags because I realized I had a sewing machine. I had access to the materials, vinyl, leather, and uh, webbing. What else, the, the D-rings the chains, all of this stuff, and a sewing machine, an industrial sewing machine. And I learned how to sew, and I made my own bags, and uh, yeah, great bags, great stuff. Maybe I'll put a, a video clip of some of the bags I made up here. Let's see here, I think, let me see if I can find some of that old footage. Check it out. Anyway, bags I made myself, but... When making the bags, I didn't just have to learn how to sew, I had to learn how to stuff them. And I got this old video from like 14 years ago about how to stuff a Muay Thai bag. Muay Thai bags are stuffed with rags. Just rags cut up into pieces. And there's a very specific way to do it. You stuff some in the bottom and then you get wads of it and you, you wedge them between the side of the bag and the filling that's already in there and you repeat this over and over again. It's a long process. And you let it stand for a bit. You put some weights on it. You let the weight compress it down. 
And then you do it again, and you stuff more stuff in there, and you keep going, and you pack it as tight as you possibly can. So those rags, when they get really tight, get really, really hard. And when you hit it really hard, the rags will, they'll feel hard and solid and stiff, but they will compress, and then they will decompress. So you have something hard and solid, and you can stuff it as heavy as you want. So check out that video. I'll, I'll put a link in the description to that one as well about how to stuff a Muay Thai bag. So you need the rags. So if you live in an area where it's difficult to get something big and heavy like a stuffed heavy bag in there, get an unstuffed one and find a bunch of rags. That might be a hard part. You might live around a, I don't know, maybe a clothing factory where they throw out rags or something like that, where they throw out the, uh, the snips of fabric that um, they can't use. Um, you might have a large collection of old clothes or know people who are throwing out old clothes. Cut those up, stuff your bag with them. Anyway, find a way to get those rags and stuff it in there. Now, you do not need a really, really heavy, heavy bag, even if you're a heavy guy. Like I said, I actually weigh more than you do. And some of my favorite bags to work with are the lighter ones. A mistake a lot of beginners do is pushing the bag. Not punching, but pushing. And there's a radical difference between punching and pushing. When you punch the bag, you want destructive force boom, to go into that bag, but we don't want it swinging around. If it's swinging around a lot, we're probably pushing it too much. Yes, it's going to move because we are displacing the target. But we don't want it wildly swinging. So I would say, before we even talk about what kind of bag or how, how heavy it should be, find a heavy bag, the smallest one you can find, and practice punching it as hard as you can while making it move as little as possible. Try to make the, ba the bag jump up and down instead of swinging back and forth. When you hit it, boom, make it jump instead of swinging. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Once you can do that, once you understand the difference between a punch and a push, then go back and you might start to realize that almost any heavy bag is going to work for you. Get a heavy bag that's going to fit in the space you have for it. Get a heavy bag that is light or heavy enough for the hardware you have to hang it with. Because maybe you, you think, oh, I want to get a 300 pound bag and hang it from my rafters. But your rafters are not strong enough to hold it up there. You're going to make a mess of your house, man. Or maybe you bought a, uh, a commercial heavy bag frame. And then you get a 658 pound bag or whatever it was you said. And then it starts bending your frame because the frame's not made for that. But whatever you do, don't stuff that heavy bag with sand. Because that turns into concrete. Heavy bags are stuffed with shredded rags or, or cut up rags. It's fabric. It feels very hard when it's packed tightly, but it's fabric. It's not sand. Sandbags turn into concrete. I've used them. They're terrible, especially if you're starting out. So a simple hundred pound bag, as long as your punching technique is punching, not pushing, that's plenty. A tie bag, if you want it longer, so you can throw low kicks. Cool. That's plenty. And those tie banana bags, generally they're about a hundred or 120 pounds. That's plenty. Anything bigger than that, I mean, if you have the room for it, if you have a place to hang it up, if you have the hardware to hang it up where it's not going to break, cool, go for it. If you can afford it, sure, go for it. At the same time, there are a lot of great bag drills you can do when you can make that bag swing. For example, you're standing in front of the bag, you want to practice your check hook. When somebody moves forward, get the bag, swing it, push it. So it's moving back and forth. When it swings at you, then boom, move out of the way and check hook that thing, right? You want to practice your footwork. 
if the bag does start swinging, you might have a tendency to try to stop it and hug it or whatever. Take the advantage of moving around that moving object. Moving with it. You want to practice some uppercuts, but your heavy bag has a vertical surface, so it has no chin. Okay. How about start pummeling it with those body shots to get it to move up, so now it's got a 45 degree angle, boom! And then you can hit it with those uppercuts. That's a fun drill to do with a heavy bag. Anyway, you don't need a giant bag. You need good punching technique. Thanks for watching. Now get out there, get that bag, and train. Thank you.